Hey everyone and welcome. So on this video, we're covering the functionality that we've customized in Dynamics 365 based on my blog post using a bookable resource specific sales and cost price for time entries. Now, the reason that we might want to use bookable resource specific uh, sales and cost prices is, is, for example, subcontractors. When we're working on a project, we could have one or even several subcontractors you know, working, working on the same project um, for us. And in those cases, we might need to um, price those subcontractors individually. And, and we most definitely, I would say most definitely will have a unique cost price per subcontractor. So out of the box uh, in Dynamics 365 Project Service Automation, that would mean that we would actually have to create uh, a price list with with different roles for the different subcontractors and you know then make sure that that those roles are on our sales price list as well as our cost price lists and you know i think that just creates a lot of work so the easier way is to do a little customization and you know kind of enable bookable resource specific sales and cost pricing so that we we can basically price uh, our, our resources based on who they are, not based on what their role is. All right, so let's jump in Dynamics 365 and see what the customizations actually look like and how they work. So I'm here on bookable resource. And on bookable resource, we have a two option field uh, where we can basically choose if we wanna use bookable resource specific pricing or not. Another field that we have is for the bookable resource specific sales price and a third field is for uh for the cost price so what we set here will be specific to this um to this specific bookable resource to this specific user which is in in this case in this example myself all right so let's see what our time entries look like so for the sake of brevity i've already created a time entry that we can see here under uh, project approvals and as we can see that time entry has a sales price of 151 which was with the price that we just saw on on bookable resource and if we look at journal lines we can see that the journal lines that have been created are for 151 and for a cost price of 76. now there's two different workflows in in the system to create these one workflow creates the journal lines and the other one updates the sales price field on project approval. And the reason for that is that if we update the sales price using a workflow, that update doesn't actually, uh, on, on the project approval I mean, that update doesn't actually flow through to the journal line. So we have to update the journal line using another workflow. All right, so let's open this time entry up and see what other options we have. All right, so some of the customizations that we have here are are pretty much optional. I think that you know if you want to use a bulk of resource specific sales price and and cost price, the bare minimum minimum is that you have a workflow that basically, you know, updates the journal lines or even just directly updates the updates the actuals. You don't necessarily have to customize the project approval, um, but, you know, this is kind of, I think this is a nice, nice feature and adds some value to the end user, uh, you know, especially if the uh, end user, the person approving the time entries has to go a lot of time entries, let's say like, 200 or, or even 300 time entries, then in those cases, that person might not want to click on, on each individual time entry and, and edit each record, you know, record specific. So back to, the, back to the project approval form, we have the sales price field visible as well as the sales amount visible. Now, a workflow copies the default role-based sales price in this field, if we want to choose a different pricing logic than bookable resource specific, 
Uh, also, um, a, a workflow copy is the original bookable resource specific sales price right here in case we want to change this sales price. So it's good, it's good to have these kind of these original values visible if we want to come back to those and, and use our original values instead. What we have here on the bottom is a quick view from bookable resource. So we have the information that we can see under this bookable resource. We have all that information displayed here uh, by a quick view. All right, so now if I wanna change the pricing logic in use, uh, and remember, let's click back here on bookable resource. Remember we have bookable resource specific pricing set to yes. So if we click um, here on pricing logic and use, and we use role specific, and we save the changes, we'll actually get an error. And that's because we have the bookable resource specific pricing logic set under this bookable resource. So if we wanna to change to role specific, we have to come back to bookable resource and click on no. And, you know, again, this is, you know, these are basically optional customizations. So if you want to develop these further, um, you know, please do so feel free to, uh, you know, take this and take this a step further and do some, you know, additional customizations, even use code if you want to. Uh, I really encourage you to give me feedback on this and, you know, challenge me and give, you know, give me some other options, what, what we could do to make this even better. Um, it's version one. So, so there is still, obviously there is still uh, a lot more than that we can do with this. Uh, all right, so now that we have role specific set, we have a sales price of 151 uh, on the sales price. Now, as you can see, the role, space, uh, role base default is 100. So we'll get a little notification here that says sales price is inconsistent with role base default sales price. All right, so this is a handy tip for the user we can apply and the sales price changes to 100. All right, so now let's change back to bookable resource and, and let's change the logic again to bookable resource specific. And let's see what happens when we try to approve a time entry that has an inconsistency between this value and the pricing logic in use. So let's click on approve. And we'll get an error message saying that the pricing logic is invalid or we have a missing sales price. All right, so let's change back to bulk of research specific. Save the changes. Well, let's update the price back to, uh, to 151. And now we can go ahead and, and approve this time entry and see how the actuals are formed. Now, one point worth mentioning is if we change this sales price, this manual change will be reflected on the related journal lines. So if I change this to 150, well, we can actually do that for the sake of example. Let's do that. Let's change this to 150. Let's ignore the suggestion and let's come back to journal lines. We can see that the sales price is uh, updated on the journal line. So the only thing we can't do is we can't, like you said in the in, in the beginning of this video, uh, at the beginning of this video, we, we can't update the sales price using workflow because that workflow, it you know, for some reason that update just doesn't flow through to the journal line. So in any case, let's approve this. All right, so it's approved. And now let's just check the actuals. And as we can see, we have an I'll build sales actual and a cost actual based on the pricing that we have set. All right, so in short, these are the customizations. Again, feel free to take this further and I actually encourage you to take this further. Uh, you know, please share your thoughts uh, and, and, and let's have a dialogue if, if that would be possible. Uh, all right, so I wanna thank you for your time and have a good one.